And good evening. Welcome to our University of Dubuque football show. The first one of the 2023 season as the Dubuque Spartans getting ready to kick off the season this Saturday at uh, Chalmers Field on the University of Dubuque campus as they get ready to welcome Wittenberg University from the North Coast Athletic Conference. One o'clock kickoff at uh, Chalmers Field and head coach Stan Zweifel, as you can see with me right now for another season, uh, talking about UD Spartan football. 15 years now, coach. Yeah, I, isn't that amazing? Yeah, I know it. <clears throat> when you think back and think about it, it's been a, a long time, but pretty fast. Uh, Tim, we uh, want to just mention this. We opened up with Wittenberg, and if the fans don't know anything about Wittenberg, what a great tradition. Mm. They have five national championships, I think 29 conference champions. Just a wonderful, wonderful storied program. And Jimmy Collins, their new football coach, is a former player off one of those national championship teams who's come back to coach uh, back at Wittenberg. And it's uh, going to be a really nice uh, competitive game. You know, uh, Tim, every year I say this to you, we try to play uh, our two non-conference games, one that we think is going to uh, be a very a, a good chance to win, and then one that's going to be real difficult to win to prepare us for the regular season when we get into it. And, and Wittenberg, you know, the last two years we opened up Marietta, decided on the last play of the game, both of those games with Marietta, and I think this one's going to be very similar with Wittenberg. Another school out of Ohio, probably more tradition than Marietta, but not as any good as conference that Marietta plays in the OAC. But Wittenberg's a very fine football team, and they'll be well coached. And they have like 170 players on their roster. Uh, Tim, so he's done a really nice job of, of bringing up the numbers from when he took over. But it'll be a very, very exciting game. And a new opponent's always kind of fun, I think, Tim, to play somebody from a different conference in another school that has great tradition. Yeah, I mean, their resume, uh, you talked about some of it, but uh, you know, five-time national champions. Uh, of course, that happened uh, back in the 60s and 70s. 70s yep. But uh, 17 conference championships. Unbelievable, isn't it? And uh, 193 All-Americans have rolled through there. And I, I think I saw they're actually the second winningest program they in are. Division Three. They are. And the other one's Mount Union, of course, and <laughs> just bad, down the road. Not bad program, too. Yes. So, you know, they have a wonderful, wonderful tradition. Uh, when I was uh, coaching at Whitewater and we had those good runs, we always talked about the, the runs that Augustana College from Illinois had that run of about five, six years. Coach Bob Reed. Yep, and then Mount Union, and then uh, Whitewater, and then Mary Harden Baylor. But before that, the standard was Wittenberg, who set that standard. So really exciting for us. Maybe we'll talk a little bit more about what you know about Wittenberg yes. here in just a moment. But this is the first show of the season for the University of Dubuque football team. So Let's talk Spartan football uh, right now. Came into camp uh, you know, a few weeks ago now, and uh, you've had, uh, I think you had one nice week of camp maybe, and then yeah. <laughs> one just brutal ooh, ooh. week of camp. That was last week with, yeah, uh, with the weather. Yeah, it's really interesting, Tim. I'll say this first of all. I'm really excited because for the first time, I have 27 seniors. That's the biggest senior class we've had since I've been here. That's got something to do with COVID, obviously, as you have more guys stay to play their fifth year. We aren't starting any freshmen on our offense, and we're not starting any freshmen on our defense with the exception of one backup. And so we really kind of feel this might be one of the most veteran teams that we've had. We were 6-4 and four last year, Tim, but 6-2 and two in the league. And the Marietta game, you know, was a game we possibly could have won in the last game of the season to put us 6-2 and two instead of 7-1. and one, We lost to Central in the hell of a football game. I think it was 25-22 or whatever, 2.3-point mm -hmm. win. So... What we'd like to do, Tim, is think that now with that experience that we've had at all our positions, both offensively and defensively, that'll show up on the field. We have our kicker back, who I think is going to be the best kicker in the conference as a sophomore. We have our punter back, who's a two-year starter for us at punter. We have a long snapper that we think is going to be better than last year's long snapper, who's a two-year starter. So I feel like we have a really veteran team. The key to all that, Tim, is that you stay healthy. And one of the things that happened last week, as you mentioned about the weather, it is difficult to recover from practices when you have such a um, hot and humid situation. On Wednesday, we got our practice canceled, could not practice because of the heat, dex, heat index, either inside or outside. On Thursday, we had a practice inside, which is all right, but we were restricted to one hour with helmets only. So right in the middle of fall camp, you lose two very important yeah. days. And those days are important not only in putting what you do in offense and defense install, but it's a conditioning effect that you have to catch back up on. 
We had a scrimmage on Friday and Saturday. We were going to scrimmage everybody on Friday, but it was too hot. So we had to go half on Friday and half on Saturday. So it's really kind of uh, put a dent into our plans. Uh, so usually today on Monday, Tim, we don't practice in our day off. But we wanted to get back an extra day of prep for Wittenberg, so we took Sunday off. So we're still kind of, you know what I'm saying, it's still kind of an odd schedule for us. But we really felt we needed to get the preparation for Wittenberg. So we lost two days of of our fall camp practices. We'll see how that all shows up. I don't think it will show up in uh, execution of offense, defense. I think it's going to show up in the conditioning effect for our players. That's what I think. How many players did he have uh, show up to put we on a UD 131, football About okay. 131. And, Tim, that's probably our smallest class that we've had her in probably 12 of the last 13 years. A lot of it has to do with the population of high school seniors are shrinking across the country. There's just no question about that. And I, I still say this, Tim, since COVID, it's been different. I don't know if I can mm -hmm. put my finger on one thing, but it's been different. So uh, that's still an excellent number for us, and we still have plenty of players. But, again, it's I think it's probably what the future holds is I don't think we're going to hit that 170, 170 mark anymore in, in um, small college football. It's going to be difficult, Tim. Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, the Spartans on both sides of the ball. Um, off offensively, let's, sure. let's talk about what you're looking like there. Looks like you got uh, from the notes I saw from the conference uh, uh, seven returning starters uh, yep. on the offensive side of the ball. Let's talk about first start with Wade Sheets, who was a second team All Conference pick at wideout. I thought he should have been first team All Conference. He returns after making 80 plus catches last year for us. Excited as heck about him. Then we have two wide receivers. Uh, um, uh, Wade is a junior. Hunter Preston, a local product from Dubuque Senior, has been a starter for us at that slot position for about 15 out of the last 20 games. He's coming back for his junior year. And uh, Cameron Bryce, who the first five games last year to flanker, uh, really did a great job. Then got his uh, kind of like a Liz Frank injury in a small bone in his foot and didn't play the same, but he's back healthy. And then our best receiver in fall camp has been Torian Butts. A senior who he had, I think, 30 catches for us last year. He has been just outstanding. So we have three juniors and a seniors coming back at those three wide receiver spots. Holy cow, that's that's really that's exciting good, yeah. for us. It's really exciting for us. And one of the backups is a junior, Derek St. Hilaire, and another backup is Braden Preston, a junior. So we really feel like we've got some really nice depth and some really nice leadership and experience at those three positions. Then our tight end is a two-year starter, and Jamari Jenkins, who had a really nice year for us. We're expecting him to have a better year. He's a junior. And then our offensive line, we've got a left tackle, Jack Connors, a senior, a two-year starter. Our center, Wes Spitzmiller, a junior, has started 15 games for us. Our right guard, Malik Spakes, has started, has started last year as a 10 games for us. He's a senior. Our right tackle, C.J. Talbert, a sophomore, started eight games for us as a freshman. And our left guard is Nero Langris, who we call Maui, who's a uh, sophomore and started eight games for us. So really nice experience in that. Then we got a transfer from Iowa Westland who dropped football in the school, closed their starting center, who will play center, uh, a center position or right or left guard. He's a junior. And then we've got a uh, really couple outstanding young players, uh, Carson Fenske, who's a sophomore, and Charles Holofield, who's a junior. And then the only freshman that's really pushing for some time in our offensive line is Jal Geit, uh, uh, outstanding six foot six, two hundred sixty five pound athletic tackle. He's, as we get him stronger, he's really going to be a great player. But he's going to see some action here as a true freshman. Mm -hmm. Our quarterback's Ben Galtig, who was uh, second team All Conference last year. He started nine games. He had the concussion out of Marietta, and he's back for his junior year in KC Moore who's a senior who backed up and started one game for us last year. Quarterback is back. And our number three is Ben Rodriguez as a junior. So we have Ben, ben Galtic, a junior starter, Casey Moore, a senior backup, and Ben Rodriguez, a junior backup. So, again, just wealth of experience there. You can feel yourself as the quarterback, coach, and coordinator moving a little bit faster than you normally would at that position because they have so much great experience. Then we got Callian Buckner coming back at tailback, second leading rusher in the league. Uh, really good player. We felt that we probably used him a little bit too much last year, so we have two really outstanding players, both our transfers. Uh, 
uh, Devin Moore out of Western New Mexico, and then Lavelle Armstead out of St. Francis in PA. And those guys are, so Kellyanne's a junior, Devin Moore's a junior, and Lavelle's a junior. So again, we've got some experience there at that position, and that's the most experience I've had since the 2011 team, which, by the way, is going to the Hall of Fame and had that great run in 2011. So there's some parallel others, Tim, that we have great experience Guys who've played, some really good playmakers, a quarterback that can win you a championship. I think a number of quarterbacks in our squad that can lead us to a championship. So if we stay healthy and the offensive line can work together as a unit and get a little bit more physical, we're going to be a pretty good football team, Tim. You mentioned important to stay healthy. Offensive line, do you feel like you've built some depth there? We have. We have nine guys that can play, but, Tim, it only takes two to really start having to juggle. So... One of the things we've done this year is we've tried to not give our ones as much contact as we have in the past. The bad news about playing wide receiver, how do you practice without running at the wide receiver spot? It's impossible. And so one of the things we've really tried to do, and we've got some soft tissue injury in our wide receiver core, but we're trying to monitor that and and reduce the volume. But the heat also plays a factor in that. But we have better depth than we've ever had before. This is the University of Dubuque football show. Head coach Stan Zweifel joining us here on this Monday night game week on the University of Dubuque campus as the Spartans getting ready to play Wittenberg University. Coach, we talked about the offensive side of the ball. Let's switch sides, go to the defensive side of the ball, and uh, give us a preview of the Spartans there. I can't tell you this might be the best front seven I've had since I've been here in 15 years. I can't tell you how excited I am about our physicality and our athleticism in our front seven. And then we've got two great safeties coming back. And I'll talk about that whole thing here. At at one defensive end, we got Ben Ratchet coming back, who's a two-year starter for us. Uh, Just a phenomenal athlete. He's in his fifth year. He started 31 games for us. So wealth of experience there and just athletic as all get out. Uh, Jesse Darkwa is going to be playing our shade inside. He started 10 games for us last year. He's 6'1", 305, and he's a senior. So one edge a senior, nose tackle a senior. Our other defensive tackle start is Dalton Crane, Creighton. He's a senior, and he's backed up by one of our really outstanding grad transfers, Donnie Thompson, out of Iowa Westland. He's a, he had transferred before from Gardner-Webb. Um, he's a grad kid. He's uh, about 6'2", 270. He's going to work himself into getting a lot of action. So those are our, te- our t- three interior guys. And then our linebacker, core Tim, it's, boy, I just can't tell you how excited I'm about our linebacker. I'm going to start with Parker Nowitzki, who we just got three days into fall camp, transferring from Morningside, the national championships in NAI. He's a kid we recruited out of Rochester, John Marshall, a couple years ago and has decided to come back to us. He's going to be playing one of our rush backers in 5'11", 230. And I don't know if I've ever told you this, Rob Huberty, our D-line coach, played on two Mm -hmm. national championship teams at University of Minnesota Duluth. And Parker Nowitzki is Rob Huberty's doppelganger, I'm telling you. That's who he is. (laughs) Looks like him, plays like him. And Rob was a fantastic college player. And and Parker's really going to give us – a physicality and a, a workmanlike attitude in that D-line. And, oh, he's a good player. I can't tell how excited. Then our other outside backer, Jerome Wilson, put on about 18 pounds in the off-season weight program. He's as quick as anybody I've ever coached that position. He'll sometimes rush the passer. He'll sometimes drop, sometimes line up over a tight end. He's a junior, and he started nine games for us last year. Our two inside linebackers, I think, are as good as anybody. C.J. Dean. Started 10 games for us last year. He's a senior, but he also started at Bemidji State when we got him as a transfer. Then I thought the first team all-conference outside linebacker, Garrett Hertzfeld, we've moved to inside. And he's about 6'4", 245. He's a natural inside guy, but we were a little bit light in in our lead, lead in our pencil, so we had to put him up on the line last year. Now he's back to his natural position, inside linebacker. We're backed up by Quintrell Gary who played some games for us last year. Chase Stuver, who played some games for us. Mike Westbrook's a transfer from uh, Notre Dame, the Division II school in Indiana. And then Sam Vibral, who had that great game against Loris last year. So we have either juniors or seniors at every one of those positions. 
and we've had our best freshman linebacker class since I've been here, and none of them could crack the two deep. Now, that's good news for us. So we're really excited about that front seven. And then our two safeties, I think, are the best safeties in the conference. Uh, Dalton Wood, who was an honorable mention pick, and then Brock Carter, who just is a every coach's dream player. He plays hard. Uh, Brock came to us from Missouri State, and uh, he started 10 games for us last year, and Dalton Wood has started 20 games for us. Two senior secondary guys in the safety. Oh, man, is that, that makes you feel pretty safe, you know what I'm saying? And then we've had a really guy that just came, kind of came out from nowhere, Ben Egan, a freshman for us, who we projected at scout team when we recruited him. He has just been playing lights out in that secondary, and he's moved into our number third a safety just because of how he's performed in fall camp. Now, the biggest question mark for us, Tim, is our corner position. We have a lot of good players, but no experience in those players. I'll start first with Sheik Nuhar Haji, and we'll just call him Noor from here on in. Okay. He's uh, what a wonderful story. Uh, migrated from Africa when he's seven, eight years old. A, a real, just a, a very inspirational story about him moving to the United States. Went to Weber State as a walk on. Uh, we ended up getting him here in late uh, June, and he's joined us. He'll be one of our starting corners. Tremendous amount of athleticism, not much experience. The other starter is Kobe Howe, who's on our 4x100 uh, track championship team. He's been with us for three years. He's just never been able to get in that lineup at corner. He's got great athleticism by the 4x1, as you'd well know, can run fast. He'll be starting our other corner. We'll play Trey Mowat corner, who played uh, back up for us last year. We'll play Jalen Womack, a freshman out of uh, Texas, at the other be at the other backup, the other corner. But that's kind of it. We're, we're still going to figure out who's going to win those starting jobs through our first two games. So the corners, inexperience. They sure don't lack for athletic ability, Tim, but they lack for experience. I've told our coaching staff, that our front seven have to make us better in the back end early in the season by putting pressure on the quarterback, not having to bring our corners up to be involved in the run fits like we'd like to do. Rob loves to stop the run. I think we'll probably be a little bit more conservative with our secondary as we move on till those kids get their feet wet. But I can't tell you that front seven is exciting for us. As you know, games can be won, games can be lost with special teams. Yep. Uh, talk about special teams uh, with, for the Spartans this year. We'll start with our kicker, Liam Smith, who had a great finish to the season. You know, we lost to Marietta out there last year by a point on a missed field goal and a missed extra point. And Liam Smith, who ends up being our kicker, had a pulled quad during that game and didn't make the trip. Wow, I wish I'd have made a trip with him. <laughs> He kicked the last eight games for us. He was the second most efficient kicker in the American Rivers Conference. He's coming back as a sophomore. What I'm most excited about him, Tim, is the strength that he got in the weight room in the offseason. He weighed about 178 pounds last year for us as freshman. He's 195 right now. He looks like a football player, and he's got extreme great pop off his leg. I think he'll kick the ball in the end zone over half the time. We do three field goals to win twice a week, and he's made every three field goals to win and as far as 48 yards. Now, I don't know how that computes in a game, but he's so much stronger. Our holder is back, Hunter Preston, one of our wide receivers. Our long snapper is a new kid. We had MJ Rupi, who was an uh, academic um, all-region guy for us at snapping. He was from Alaska. He chose to not to come back to school. We have Logan House, a backup tackle, who's 6'6", 270, great levers. We've been working with him for three years to get him to this spot. And so he's had a really nice fall camp, Tim. He's been very accurate on his long snap and very accurate on his short snap. And, and he's a big body for our short snap, and which gives us some A-gap protection, which MJ was a smaller kid. Our punters kind of holler, a two-year starter for us. A lot of times you look at his punting average and you say it's not good. It's only 31.7, but you know our punt team, we're rugby style. We choose to kick the ball out of bounds so there's no return against us. And so I always look at net. Last year, the average, the average, we averaged 1.7 yards on returns against us. So that really That's ends good. up being really good for us. So we might lose 
three or four yards in our distance, but we think we gained those three or four yards or more by where we place the football. Then we have a punt returner in our uh, two scrimmages. We had two kickoff returns for touchdowns. We haven't done that in my 15 years, my <laughs> friend, so I'm hoping that'll translate to something. And our punt return is the uh, Lavelle Armstead, the tailback I talked about, the Saint, trans transfer from St. Francis. Excited about him returning punts and kicks and Tory Butts. And then we had Wade Sheets, who was our starter last year in punts and returning kicks. So, again, if you hear me talk, we have a little bit more depth than we've had in the past in those, in those specific positions. But one of the hardest things in Division Three football, I think, about the return game is the kicking isn't consistent like it is at Division One. So mm -hmm. you get long kicks and you can return them. Sometimes the ball's going who knows where. And so one of the things we always preach about our punt return team is make sure we have the ball when it's done. And our punt team is punt the ball 30 yards and don't let anything happen. No return, no blocks. And so that part I think will do a good job. And I think we have his most exciting kickoff returns we had since Justin Spaulding back in 2011. So we're really excited about that. Hearing you talk about uh, a number of the players, it uh, sounds like they were really uh, bought in. The uh, off-season program really came to, came to camp uh, ready to go. Yeah, one of the things that's really interesting, Tim, at small college, I've said this to you before, if you have 15 seniors, you feel like, hey, we're going to have a chance because – if the 15 guys who stay, they're playing in some form or fashion, whether it be a starter or a backup or a special team. This year, I said, we've got 27. So that speaks a little bit about how guys have mm -hmm. stayed around. And then I think the other thing it speaks of is you've got juniors and seniors, man, in your position. Tim, you know in my years here, that's been difficult for us to do. We've always had um, freshmen or sophomores. Sure, they're good ability, but you'd like to have a freshman, sophomore, not be a starter if you could because your junior and seniors are better. I think we've got a chance this year to have that happen for us. Well, let's talk about your opponent a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, the Wittenberg Tigers uh, coming in. Uh, you mentioned about their tradition, uh, the open of the program, kick off the season, uh, two quality opponents to, to open the season. You got to Wisconsin Platteville the week after, but Wittenberg first. And uh, what can you tell us about what you know about them? Coming back. Now, this is really hard, Tim, for us. I'll tell you why this game is so difficult for us in a scheme-wise. Uh, Jimmy hired a new defensive coordinator and a new defensive pass game coordinator in the secondary. One's from Baldwin Wallace, which is in that Ohio conference, and the other one's from Otterbein, another Ohio. So we've done our, done our research, obviously, on those two coaches, but uh, now they're going from teams to a different personnel grouping. So, whoo we're not quite sure. We've been practicing a lot of stuff. We don't have any game tape on them from their present staff. We have the last three games last year, which we're going over personnel, Tim, but we're not quite sure that will come out on defense. We're, we're, we're uncertain. So we're practicing on a number of things we think we could see. On offense, they're got a, they'll be really like they were last fall. Uh, um, they'll be a, a one-back team. Uh, they'll be very similar to us, Tim, playing a lot of 11 personnel, three wide receivers, one tight end. The thing that I think they've, that I've looked at their roster, they've seemed to have lost some offensive linemen. I count four new offensive linemen mm -hmm. from what played last year. So that, that'll be a factor in, on how, uh, how advanced they can be, in, Tim, what they're trying to do. Uh, I think they've taken a couple offensive players. If I looked at their roster and put them to defense – and so I think there's some transition going on. We've been practicing what we saw off their offense last fall, which I think will be consistent, but there is a big question mark for us, Tim, on how they're going to line up defensively. We do know this. They're going to be well coached. They're well represented with, as we talked about, tradition. But it's just been a program that, you know, uh, really hangs its hat on uh, being playing really good football. And I, I think we'll see the same thing. Well, you're probably glad you had some preparation uh, in hot weather because it looks like uh, oh, weekend gosh. forecast oh my <laughs> not going to do us any favors uh, temperature-wise. Isn't that something? And then the week after that, we'll be in the high 90s. I don't know how we're going to practice. Tim, Tim, you know, one of the things I, I think that's hard is that, you know, you can practice in that, but the recovery time takes something out of your body. Yeah, yep. And so you're not so concerned about the day you're practicing. It's about two days later. 
And so what you really, I think there's three things that are so important we talk to our players. Is number one, you got to drink just as much water and fluids as you can. And sometimes that's tough, my friend. Two, you got to sleep. And, you know, God, it was hard to sleep in the dorms here the past five, <laughs> six days. And so we're really trying to emphasize taking care of their bodies by yeah. getting enough fluids, getting sleep, and then doing all the stretching and recovery stuff that we possibly can do. And that has cut into our practice time, Tim. It really has. So I, I'm not making any excuses. We're going to be ready. We'll, we'll be ready to go. But there'll, there'll be a toll on our bodies based on the weather. Mm -hmm. Well, the American Rivers Conference uh, came out with the uh, – Coaches poll for the season, and uh, Wartburg, no surprise, picked no his, surprise. the first with a number of players back from that no uh, national semifinal team. And then uh, Central picked uh, second, co third, uh, University of Dubuque fourth, pretty close in the. Yes. It's going to be a close race again, though, and you just don't know what's going to happen. Tim, I would week tell in, you that's out. exactly how I would have voted had I been able to vote for Dubuque. I would have de definitely voted. The top four teams are Wartburg, who I think is above, Central, who got better at the end of the year last year but struggled early with the loss of their quarterback, and they didn't make finalize on who that quarterback was to games 8, 9, and 10. Co and us, been a toss-up since I've been here. We've been very fortunate to win a lot of close games, but they've been pretty exciting, Tim, let me tell you that. I'll say. <laughs> and so I say to our guys, you know, Second place, you got to be able to put yourself in a position not to lose to anybody other than when you get a chance to play Wartburg, you got to beat them. And I think everybody sees that Wartburg is the team to beat. Now, Tim, holy samoli, anything can happen, and we've had that kind of thing happen to us before. We're on the road against Wartburg and on the road against Central. And then, of course, we got, as you mentioned, Wittenberg and Platteville to start us out two tough games. I told our guys we've got to play hard as we possibly can, put ourselves that we're getting better when we start the conference. And, you know, really kind of interest for us, our first conference game is Loris. Uh, that's been, I think, 2010 was the last time I opened up with Loris in conference. Mm -hmm. At our place in a night game, I was thinking about that. I think that's the last time we opened with Loris. So that's kind of an odd switch, but it'll be a good first game, Gus, because they'll be fired up and we'll be fired up to play that first conference game. It'll be their second conference game. Excuse me, we have a bye. I think before we go, I uh, want to let you talk about your coaching staff. Uh, pretty yes. much has stayed intact, I think, from it last has. year, and, that, and that's always a good thing. Yeah, you know, I, uh, Rob Huberty is our defensive coordinator. He's going on, I think it's year five. Rob, excuse me, if it's year four, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how old I am half the time. <laughs> Miles Hookstead, our offense coordinator, has been with me since the first year I got her, 2009 as a player and then as a coach that long, All-American for us, and Football, just really a, a really nice tradition here at Dubuque for him. Theo Hopkins, our defensive back coach, I think is going on year three for us. Ryan K Crable, our offensive line coach, going on year three for us. We have uh, we hired Dequan Ramsey as a part-time guy, a defensive line uh, player for us. It'll be a really nice addition. And then Devin Detloff, our GA from Augustana College and Rock Islands joined us as a GA, and then Alex Mathis, who played for us last year, is handling our receiving core and doing a great job for us. So we, we've got a lot of guys back that way. We feel like we've got some experience. And then I shouldn't leave out Dale Plessel, who joined us uh, two years ago, the Dubuque senior coach. Uh, Tim, he's done an outstanding job, been a really uh, good person for me to lean on, a lot of experience in college, a lot of experience in high school. Uh, just an even-keeled guy. A lot of guys say I'm not very even-keeled, Tim, so that's good to have a couple <laughs> even-keeled guys on the staff. But he's done a really nice job. But the one thing, Tim, when you say about having the guys around for a couple years, you know what to expect. It's kind of yeah. like just talking about a football team with experience. You don't get surprised very often when you have guys that have been around a while. Coach? Looking forward to the 2023 season. I know yes. you are, too. Kick yes. off 1 o'clock on Saturday against Wittenberg University. Any final thoughts before we wrap up this you know, first show? I, I do want to say this. We're having Senior Day, the first game of the year this year. What's the reason why, Stan? Well, every year we have the last game of the season. It's freezing. It's cold. There's not many people in the stands. What the heck? Let's have it on opening day when it's going to be 90. You can be in shorts and a T-shirt here. <laughs> And have a nice crowd. And so 
we're excited about getting our seniors to be announced. And then game two, we got our Hall of Fame game. And that's our 2011 team coming back, which has a special place in my heart, Tim. It sure. really does. And uh, I've had probably, and I don't want to exaggerate, I probably have between 25 and 28 players call me personally and say how excited they are to come back and that's great. get that 2011 team. So the first two games will be really exciting games, but special things too. So the seniors getting that first one against Wittenberg and then Hall of Fame game with our 2011 team. Well, Coach, we'll be broadcasting the home games on uh, the University of Duke website, udspartans.com, where you're watching the uh, show tonight and also the, the YouTube channel. You can uh, view this episode uh, uh, in a uh, delayed basis after it's done. If you didn't get a chance to tune in for the whole thing, you want to watch it back, too. So you can check out the, those two platforms to uh, watch the University of Dubuque football show with head coach Stan Zweifel here. And uh, I think we're going to be here on Monday nights at 5 o'clock yes. most weeks. So yes. Check your local listings for yes. <laughs> the latest. Get in the TV Guide. So on next week's Does Labor still Day. Exist? Yeah, TV Guide still I exist? I don't know. I don't know it either. Probably online somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it is. Probably in an online format. I'll have to Google search yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> I won't. So we'll talk to you next week, and we'll uh, just keep keep, uh, keep watch rolling. on the uh, website to see when the next show is. We might be going Tuesday next week with it being Labor Day. Sure. Night, but we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll let you know. On the fly. Yeah. Stay tuned. Thanks, Coach. We'll Thank look you, Tim. We'll forward to seeing the Spartans on Saturday. Thanks. All right, this has been the University of Dubuque Football Show with Head Coach Stan Zweifel on this Monday night. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great night.